Good afternoon and welcome to today's caregiver webinar, Current Popular Scams, Tips for How to Protect Your Loved Ones. My name is Allegra Joffe and I am the supervisor of the Caregiver and the Supportive Service Unit with the Fairfax Area Agency on Aging. A few housekeeping items today before we start the session. Today's presentation is being recorded. A link to the recording will be sent to all the registrants uh, within a week from today. Um, if you have any questions during the session today, we will be doing Q&A at the end of the session for about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, the presentation, the PowerPoint, it will be sent to you as well. It will come with the recording uh, within a week. And at the end of the presentation, we are going to have a survey. If you could please take a moment to answer those questions, it really does help us make relevant and interesting uh, topics and events for our caregiving community. And I would like to introduce our speaker today, who is Melissa Smarr. Melissa is a lifelong Northern Virginia resident who has worked for Fairfax County government for over 21 years in different capacities and at three agencies. In 2010, Melissa was promoted to branch chief, where she manages building code complaints, unlicensed contractor complaints, and conducts public outreach events. She is a facilitator of multi-agency initiatives, the, Sh the Silver Shield Anti-Scam Campaign, which focuses on educating older residents about how they can protect themselves from scammers. She is a graduate of Virginia Tech, where she earned a bachelor's degree in consumer studies, a bachelor's degree in human development, and a master's degree in public administration. Thank you so much for being here today, Melissa, and sharing your expertise with us. Uh, can you please join us on camera and take it away? Thank you, Allegra, and good afternoon, everyone. I hope this is gonna be a um, not a scary time because my presentations have been known to be scary. I'm not trying to scare you, but just trying to make you aware of um, the um, the scams that are happening in our community. Um, Allegra, could you uh, allow me to share my screen, please? Yes, absolutely. Oh, it's not allowing me because I guess you have your um, slide up. Okay. Cool. All righty. Okay, great. All right. So um, as Allegra so eloquently introduced Melissa, me, could you go into your presentation mode as well? Because I yeah, see that's what I'm trying. Sorry, it's what I'm trying to do. My apologies. Oh, no problem. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Sorry about this. Sorry. Some, we didn't have any problems during our practice session. Um, paused. Why is it paused? Okay. There we go. Can you see it, Allegra? It looks terrific. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Okay. So as I was saying, um, sorry for the uh, delay. Um, we started Silver Shield back in uh, 2017 um, with uh, nine different agencies, including the Fairfax County Police Department. Uh, so the Fairfax County Police Department, they investigate um, scams uh, that are reported to them of a financial loss nature. Uh, and some of the scams, I will tell you, can never be solved because a lot of scams per are perpetrated overseas. Um, so we're doing our best to try to protect people from being scammed. And that's why a very important step you all took today, and obviously Allegra inviting me to the presentation, is to learn about what's out there. So um, just a quick fact, um, it is estimated about 11% of adults or more than 25 million people have been a victim of a scam during a one year study period, according to the Federal Trade Commission. Um, some people do not report any financial losses or being a victim of a scam uh, for a couple of reasons. We've been told during um, our in instituting Silver Shield that people are scared to report because one, they're concerned that their children are going to send them to a nursing home. Uh, they are concerned that uh, negative, um, a negative reaction will occur, whether they'll be re-victimized. 
by the same scammer or a different scammer, um, the in, the chances of that happening do increase. Um, but also reporting it, we could, you know, we can help to try to get, um, you know, services to the people. Obviously, the main goal of people is to get their money back. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes that does not. But um, there are other um, uh, outlets out there. There's, you know, uh, counseling and, and, you know, just group, you know, talking about, you know, sharing your story uh, because it does help. Um, but also you want to do what's best for yourself. So just to make you aware of those um, uh, benefits as well um, that, that could be available. Not that it's a benefit to be a victim, but, you know, trying to help people who have been a victim. So I'm first going to start by talking about the stop, top scams of 2023. So this chart is from the Federal Trade Commission. I'm going to talk about the top five uh, frauds that uh, was reported to them in 2023. Number one, imposter scams. Um, this could be a whole variety of scams. Um, this could be the business and job opportunity scams that's num listed number five on this chart. Uh, this could be imposter scams related to grandparent scams, um, IRS scams, um, romance scams. I mean, there are many different scams that the imposter scam can incorporate. And um, to talk about the grandparent scam for just a moment, um, that has become a huge scam. Uh, number one, there are usually three scenarios that take place during the scam. Either you're, it's alleged that your grandchild has been kidnapped, your grandchild has been in an accident and is in the hospital, or your grandchild has been in, um, has been arrested for an accident and is in jail. Um, so a lot of the scams are basically emotionally charged in the sense that they, the person who's perpetrating the scam is wanting an immediate reaction. And basically you want to stop yourself and think, okay, do I, is this an actual emergency or is the person scaring me enough to make me feel like it is, a, is it is an actual emergency? Um, so what we tell people is if in your gut, it's something that just doesn't feel right, you can certainly hang up the phone, but sometimes the scammers will call back. You have the right and the ability and the absolute strength to not answer the phone if it's someone you don't recognize. And I'll be going over more tips during the presentation. Uh, so you just want to keep that in mind. Um, another tip that I actually learned on the news uh, recently was people, um, families are actually putting together like a passcode amongst themselves or like a sentence or some like key phrase um, so that if you are, let's say, being perpetrated for a grandparent scam that, you know, if you can, if the person can come up with that, you know, actual phrase, then, you know, it may not be a scam. So you just want to, again, just little tricks to protect yourself. Uh, number two, uh, online shopping and negative reviews. Um, we were already as, uh, you know, in the United States, we were already shopping online prior to the pandemic, but obviously the pandemic made a lot of us even more so um, very um, willing and forced to uh, shop online, whether it's groceries, Amazon obviously is a big company that, you know, people shop using their website and then, you know, other goods and services. So um, online shopping uh, scams can include um, the young people actually are scammed more often with uh, Facebook marketplace, um, Instagram, uh, people will shop on the different uh, social media platforms. Um, if you want to shop online, uh, a couple of tips. Number one, you want to use your credit card. Uh, you do have 60 days to dispute a charge. Uh, that can include not receiving the item um, or that um, the, the item is not what you purchased if it is sent to you. Um, so you want to make sure that you, that you pay by credit card. If you pay by debit card, that's linked to your checking account. And that money is pretty much going to be gone once you make that purchase. So it is recommended that you use a credit card for online shopping. Negative reviews. Um, this again is related to, uh, your bigger, um, 
marketplaces. Um, and then of course, you know, it could link you to a negative review, even though you didn't write a negative review. So you just want to be careful how you use online. You want to be comfortable. If it, if it doesn't feel comfortable, then don't do it. Um, and then there is help out there if, if needed, which we'll go over uh, towards the end of the presentation. Uh, number three, prizes, sweepstakes, and lotteries. And I know people asked, I had a presentation last week and someone asked me, how can lotteries still be around? And the answer is they are. Now, obviously there's the Powerball and the, um, the different state lotteries uh, that are done by um, a, a, an organization that is legitimate. But these are actually more so you receive an email or you receive a text message that you've won $10 million and people are clicking on these links, whether they're emails or text messages, and uh, they'll ask you to pay taxes up front um, before you get your money. Well, in a legitimate lottery, it's going to be that whatever the winnings are, the, that money is going to be taken from the amount that you're actually going to receive. But some people don't understand how lotteries work. And if you've never won, I have not but I know, you know enough about it because I've done research um, that that's how it takes place. You're not paying taxes up front. It's taken out of the, earn the winnings of whatever you win. So you just want to, again, be careful. You don't want to click on, you know, email messages or text messages that look, you know, suspect or, you know, shady. Um, <clears throat> for emails, you want to actually click over the email, the sender to find out where it's from. Um, it may look legitimate, but in fact, it might be fake. So you just, again, want to do what you can to protect yourself. Um, investment scams, um, that was number four last year. Investment scams can actually be a couple of different scenarios. It could be that you're working what you think is with a legitimate um, and licensed uh, financial advisor, when in fact, they may not be. You want to do your research. Um, they do, again, investment um, and financial advisors have to be licensed. Um, and you can find that information online. Uh, FINRA is a uh, independent national organization that will actually, um, they do license those individuals and can tell you, you can either call them or look on their website to confirm whether or not your financial advisor is licensed. Or <clears throat> if you find out or someone reproaches you and says, well, I can you know, promise you 20% in returns, well, that is usually not the case, especially over a long-term period. So again, you just want to be careful, do your research. You don't want to give your money to somebody um, that you don't trust, or even if you trust them, you know that um, you know what you're getting into because again, it's your money, it's not their money. Um, and there have been scams recently that have been discovered by men and women who are in, in clergy roles. Um, and so that is happening. So you just, again, want to be careful. Um, just because they're a clergy person doesn't mean that they can't scam individuals. So you just want to, again, not to scare you, but make you aware that there are people out there that will steal your money for whatever reason or attempt to steal your money for whatever reason. And then number five, business and job opportunities. Um, people are looking more and more online. Um, people are looking on Craigslist. Um, Facebook Marketplace, um, social media platforms to look for jobs. And this is where a lot of scams occur uh, because they're not legitimate um, jobs, number one. Number two, these opportunities or these business opportunities require money up front. And if it's a legitimate job, you're not paying money up front. Um, so you, again, just want to be careful and do research um, if you want to try to find a job online. Um, and people are, move, are moving to online um, job postings because it's more convenient. Um, newspapers are unfortunately fading. Um, so finding a job online is not uncommon in our, in our world now, but just <clears throat> making sure that they're legitimate um, advertisements and legitimate jobs, that, that is sometimes harder to decipher. So again, um, I will provide numbers of if, if you have questions about possible scams um, or opportunities that you're seeing that you're unsure about. 
Um, so the next uh, several slides is information from the Federal Trade Commission, or as they call themselves, FTC. Um, so there's been some efforts related to illegal telemarketing. Um, the, the states, uh, the District of Columbia and the federal government are working together um, in an effort called Operation Stop Scam Calls um, to try and um, reduce these illegal telemarketing calls, which are sometimes responsible for uh, billions of calls to US consumers. Um, a lot of calls um, are perpetrated overseas um, I read somewhere one time that these machines will call up to 10,000 phone numbers a minute. And so they're just basically looking to see if these phone numbers, if someone answers the phone or not, that's what they're trying to do. And you can use the robo, no, no mo robo calls. Um, the phone companies now, whether um, and it's mo mainly cell phones, are looking to... Um, give you some type of disclaimer or warning that it could be a possible uh, scam uh, call. Um, and of course you need to use it for your discretion. And we've had people ask us, well, you know, Melissa, I'm waiting for a phone call from a doctor's office, or I'm waiting on a phone call from a pharmacy. Within the first five to 10 seconds of answering a phone call, you're gonna know if it's a legitimate phone call and it's the phone call you're waiting on, or it's a scam call. If it's a scam call, hang the phone up. You have the right to do it. I know people think it's rude, but I tell people I'd rather you be deemed rude as opposed to being scammed. So just keep that in mind. Um, proposing a ban on impersonator fraud. We talked about this earlier. Um, the Federal Trade Commission is working on trying to uh, reduce the number of business and government impersonation scams. Again, this would include the IRS scam, romance scams, um, anything to do with with business scams. So just to let you know that that is being worked on. And then of course, investment schemes. Um, the Federal Trade Commission brings cases against companies uh, that defraud consumers. And so they have the ability to take them criminally. And so that's what they're trying to do to try to curb uh, any additional um, scams perpetrated um, against um, wonderful consumers. Um, additional information, um, emerging forms of fraud. Um, in 2023, the Federal Trade Commission announced um, to help promote the development of ideas to protect consumers um, from the use, misuse of artificial intelligence, enabled voice cloning from, for frauds and other harms. Um, actually, right before this, we uh, Allegra and I were talking about AI uh, that might be possibly something, maybe if Allegra decides to invite me back, that we could have a conversation about as well. Um, I know I'm working with ARP to put together a presentation. Um, it's it's just an ever-changing, um, it, it's a technology that can be used for good, but unfortunately it is being used in some cases for not good. And so just knowing what it is and protecting yourself from that would be ideal. Uh, we are actually doing a scam jam, which I'm going to provide Allegra more information on. Uh, it's going to be held at the Government Center on Friday, uh, the 19th of April uh, from 9 to noon. It's going to be televised on Channel 16. It's also going to be held in person at the Fairfax County Government Center. And our whole three hour uh, long time together uh, is going to be about AI. So I will get uh, Allegra those details as soon as they are finalized. Um, Canning scams uh, or spam enforcement, uh, Publishers Clearinghouse, Experian um, have been two big cases recently that the Federal Trade Commission has been working on. Um, and again, just trying to eliminate, you know, scams and spam and all of that bad stuff that can affect us as consumers. And then um, the Federal Trade Commission is trying to get information out in uh, several different languages to those who do not speak English as their primary language. So again, they are working with in ways to try to get to the communities. And uh, I've included my sources as well, so you know where I got them from. So some of the, so six of the top possible 2024 scams that the AARP is um, letting us know about. Check cooking scam. Uh, this is actually related to the check washing scam. Um, so last year, we had a, a 
presentation uh, with um, the United States Postal Inspection Service and the gentleman, the investigator from that department con, you know, basically told homeowners, look, if you want to, and consumers, if you want to write a check and use the mail, that's great. However, just know there could be criminals lurking. I don't know if anybody noticed, but during the pandemic, um, there were a couple of things that happened. Number one, our mailboxes, the opening of our mailboxes actually uh, became um, not as wide um, because during the pandemic, apparently people were using fishing poles and other ways to get track or get, excuse me, get mail out of the mailbox because uh, they were looking for checks. Uh, there was also a scam that uh, was um, targeting our mail um, postal or postal workers where they have a key to these mailboxes. And this key apparently is worth between $800 and $1,000 on the black market. And so criminals were actually trying to steal these keys from the postal workers. So again, they're trying to make the postal workers, you know, job less, you know, difficult and, and you know, as safe as it possibly can be. So again, you just want to make sure that if you're using the mailboxes, they recommend that you go to the post office and actually go inside and use the um, mailboxes if you want to send checks. Um, again, just, you know, just as a safety precaution for everybody on the call. Um, so with the check cooking scam, um, you, again, it's more of basically trying to remove all of what was already written so that the criminals um, can use the check and use it to their advantage and get money that they want. Um, or they're creating a check based on the check that they find or steal. And then of course, um, the bank mobile apps where a lot of us will use the, you know, our cell phones to take pictures so that we don't actually physically go to a bank branch or credit union branch um, to try to make it more um, convenient for customers Sometimes that's what the thieves are, are banking on. So you just want to make sure. Um, again, um, you know, using a credit card to pay um, to pay bills is something more and more people are doing. If you don't like that method, then drop your check off at the post office inside um, so that, you know, you want to make sure you watch out for any Suspicious transactions, if you're going to pay by check to make sure that, you know, the check isn't more than you intended it to be or something goes awry with the check. Uh, voice print scams. This is related to the to artificial intelligence where um, pe uh, people are recording our voices or using a software to basically make it appear that we're um, speaking when in fact we're not. Um, Celebrities are being using being scammed this with this uh, technology as well. Um, you want to make sure that um, to stay safe, you want to prevent your voice from being duplicated. Well, how do you do that? Um, you know, you you can ask if they're recording the conversation. Um, they, there's a scam that happened several years ago that's making a comeback called the um, "Can You Hear Me" scam, and the basically the the what they're trying to do is they're trying to get you to say yes so that they can record your voice to get, you know, they were using it for loans and credit cards um, by just simply us saying, you know, saying yes. Um, so again, you just want to be careful how you answer the phone. And again, if you want to um, not answer the phone and screen your calls, that's what people are doing. And that's perfectly A-OK -okay as well. Um, delayed action sweepstakes scams. Um, so they'll, you'll receive an email or text message that says, great, you won. Um, and then they're trying to get you to pay the taxes or other fees in advance, like we discussed earlier. Um, but now what they're trying to do is they're trying to get us to give up our bank information um, or our social security number so that they can use that to possibly file, you know, ta with taxes with the IRS, which we're now in tax season. Um, they also will start small. They'll actually write small checks to see if you notice. Um, and if they get deposited, then they'll... Um, so it's, again, about getting your banking information, whether they get a check, they get, you know, a credit card, or excuse me, a um, social security number or a routing number. So you want to be careful what you give over the telephone. 
Some of the control you can take back is you make the phone call yourself, or if you don't feel comfortable doing business over the phone, um, if they're like, if it's your bank or credit union and you want to go in person, go ahead and go in person to try to, you know, make it safe for you as best you can. So just, you, you want to do what you can to be in control. Um, and then with any sweepstakes scam, if it's too good to be true, then it probably is. Um, and if, if, again, if they perpetrate the phone call, just hang it up or you can ask them, please give me your number and I'll call you back. And a lot of times if you ask them for their phone number, they'll just hang up. So, um, again, just stick to your gut because your gut, you know, if it's wrong. Um, okay. The virtual, uh, celebrity scam again, uh, this is happening with a lot of celebrities. The reason why I bring it up, it actually made, um, the today show, there was a woman who gave $200,000 to who she thought was one of the hosts of the Today Show, uh, Jacob Goloff, and um, he never received the money. Um, it was a complete scam. So again, the celebrities don't need our money because they're probably making more money than we are. So again, you just want to be careful in, um, you know, not giving your money away if you don't have to. Uh, the multi-stage grandparent scam. Um, so they've now been, it's been more sophisticated. I kind of alluded this to this earlier. Um, now they're trying to get people who act like, um, who, who pretend to be uh, defense attorneys and or uh, local prosecutors. Um, uh, we had a couple of victims here in Fairfax County who had been told over the phone that they had a warrant for their arrest, that they weren't cooperating. And so they went literally to the local police station in West Springfield to turn themselves in. And the police said, uh, they got an officer and the officer said, you do not have any warrants for your arrest. This is an absolute scam. But these people really thought that they had done something wrong. Um, these two people that did go to the police station did not give up money, but we don't know of those who may have given up money and never came to the police to report the crime. Um, in Maryland, um, last fall, there was actually people who were showing up in vest, like yellow and orange vest, um, and picking up cash from the victim. So it used to be that you would get a gift card, you would, uh, people would scratch off the back of the gift card, give them the numbers, give them the four digit pin number. And then that money would disappear in a matter of probably three to five minutes. Now they're getting more sophisticated with this particular scam or this you know, this take on it, and then also showing up to your door with um, people giving cash to these couriers is what they would call them. So again, um, you you don't have to engage. If you feel that you've gotten too deep, then you need to just hang the phone up um, and call the police if you feel that there's some type of, um, you have a, whether you feel your person is in danger or your house is in danger, um, you know, we had a woman who actually, it was a, it was a home improvement scam, but they were banging on her windows. And she's like, well, I didn't want to call the non 911 because it wasn't an emergency, but she felt like she was like, they were going to break into her house. Um, and the police detective who was sitting beside me, because we were talking to the woman together, he goes, this is the instance where you do call 911. If you feel like they're going to break into your home and hurt you as an individual. So, um, just be careful what kind of phone calls you decide to take. And again, just, you know, not that you can't take phone calls, but just making sure uh, you don't get scammed over the phone. Uh, the Paris Olympic scam. So whether it's the Paris Olympics or the Super Bowl or a big concert or some big event that is happening, um, criminals are basically um, either trying to sell you counterfeit tickets. Um, at that point, you've lost the money. And again, that's why it's important to pay by credit card to see if you can recoup your money back. Um, people in good faith are going online to purchase tickets and then they never receive them or they get them and then they, and they go to the venue and they find out they're counterfeit. So like I said, in this example, so again, you just want to be careful in, in doing transactions because a lot of these counterfeit items look real. So, um, you just want to do your best and try to go through legitimate companies that sell this um, these tickets or whatever you're trying to get, again, to, to make sure that you all have a good time and you're not scammed. 
Um, so scams after disasters, um, you know, whether it's a hurricane, a big snowstorm, tornadoes, you know, some natural disaster. Uh, there are people that, you know, because a lot of these, uh, you know, weather events are reported nationwide, um, there are people that will come from Texas if there's an event here in Northern Virginia, because they're going to basically be here to try to scam our money. So if, if you still live in your home, uh, you want to say door to door, say no to door to door solicitations. Um, Consumer Affairs actually requires that door to door solicitors be licensed. Um, and they have a white, it's like a white business card. Um, it's laminated, it's both front and back. It tells the, the name of the person, the company, the address. And then on the back, it has their picture, their um, fingerprint, um, so that, you know, you make sure that they're in fact legit. Um, you want to make sure you hire a contractor that is in the area as opposed to possibly one out of state because they may not be licensed in Virginia. And also you don't know, you know, if they're coming back because we've had that happen as well. Um, and you don't want to give any deposits for work before the repair can begin. Again, just trying to protect your money. There's also possible insurance fraud. Um, so you want to make sure that you always get a contract and written estimates. You want to ensure your insurance approves the repairs before they begin. And you don't want to give out your insurance information to anyone. Um, during uh, natural disasters, charities, uh, scams do go increase. Um, and you want to make sure that you donate to charities that you know and trust um, and not, you know, an off brand of that because that could end up not being a legitimate company. Um, the National Center for Disaster Fraud um, was created um, in 2005. They've had about 70,000 complaints involving over 50 natural ma and man-made disasters. Um, and uh, this is the number you would call. Um, and if any big disaster would happen in our area, usually FEMA, uh, the Federal Emergency Management so, um, Agency would be contacted and, and would probably be on site as well. Uh, just um, the coronavirus, even though I know it's been four years, almost four years since it started, there's still some scams that are um, around. And one I just wanted to highlight is the COVID-19 uh, vaccination card scam. So when there were people that decided to get the vaccine, and I'm not saying you should or shouldn't, but people did, and they would go on the social media to show off their vaccination card. Well, on that vaccination card was our name. Some people put their birth dates. Some people put their address. Um, and that was um, basically getting scammers enough information to be able to, you know, you know, unfortunately, um, identity theft with credit cards, you know, getting loans out in your name and you had no idea. Um, people were actually buying um, COVID cards online who didn't want to get the vaccine, but needed the card in order to go back to work or go travel, go to concerts, because that was... Um, that was a requirement for a bit of time uh, back in 21, 22. Uh, so again, just making sure that with any type of health issue or any big disaster, there's gonna be scams related to those um, emergencies. So just wanna make you aware. Um, shopping scams, um, I know we talked a little bit about this. I just wanted to bring, regardless of what time of year, but especially during the holidays, um, you know, your November, December timeframe, um, sham order confirmations. I still receive those via email. I just delete them. Bogus shipping notices, whether it's from, it looks like it's from FedEx, UPS, DHL, whatever major, you know, um, USPS, whatever major delivery, um, organization, you know, that, that those are perpetrated, um, shady email scams, cloned websites, disappearing packages. And that happens a lot during November and December. Um, fake charities, uh, unreal relatives in distress, and that's usually uh, perpetrated on social media, and then sob stories on social media related to unreal relatives in distress, phony classified ad listings, intercepted data. Um, so people are trying to always steal from us. Um, you just, again, have to put your guard up at all times. Um, Phony online shopping websites, they may look like they're real, but in fact, they're not. Um, again, you want to make sure that you're not, if you're going to 
shop online, you want to make sure you're clicking on the actual company website as opposed to an ad online or a so on social media, because again, it could be a scam. Use your credit card um, and you want to use trusted shopping websites. Um, for safety, they put an S in the, for HTTPS. I know that's kind of going away, but some companies are still using that for safety. A lot of companies have a lockdown at the bottom. It's not a blanket guarantee that nothing can be stolen, but they are working their best to make sure that your information is not stolen. Um, again, you just want to make sure you're doing your best to not lose your money. Um, when you do shop, you want to make a list and a budget. You want to make sure you do your research. You want to look at the best deals. You want to keep track of your purchases, especially during the holidays, because a lot of people tend to buy packages and presents for many people. Um, and you want to give gifts, not personal information. Um, what can you do? So some tips that I'm going to go over again. Um, you don't have to answer the phone. You have the control and power to use this option. You do not have to answer the door if somebody's at your door. A lot of people are using the ring camera or security systems, you know, try to better protect their themselves and their properties. Um, that's a personal decision if you choose to go that route. Um, if something sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. Um, you do not want to click on unknown text or email messages. You want to create strong passwords for online accounts. It is recommended that you change your passwords every 30 days. Uh, a couple months ago, I was asked a specific question. Hey, do you, do you change your passwords every 30 days? I do not. I know I should be. It is a, it is a major, um, undertaking in which to do that, but to protect yourself in this day and age, it is a good idea. Um, Multi-factor auth authentication companies are using as well to try to protect consumers um, as another element. I'm sure in the next couple of years, it's going to be something else that we're going to have to get used to um, and try to adapt to any changes to help better protect ourselves. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you want to create a safe word or phrase uh, with your family so in the event there is a problem, it can assist in protecting you. Um, the example that I use, a grandparent scam or a scam convincing the individual your loved one has been kidnapped, is in jail or in the hospital. Uh, Fairfax County, we have our own consumer affairs office. We're the only uh, jurisdiction in the Commonwealth that does. Um, everybody else would have to go to the Virginia Attorney General's Office for consumer complaints and advice. Um, I've And I know Allegra is going to be sending this out in the next week. So that's the phone number to Consumer Affairs. Um, financial Crimes um, with the Fairfax County Police Department, they have their own website to report financial crimes. I included the URL at the bottom. The non-emergency number is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week every day of the year. I know this year it's a leap year, so it's 366 days. Um, you can ask for a police officer to come to your house if you want to do a per in-person report, or you can do the financial crime website and complete um, all the fields that are requested and required. Um, I know it will take about an hour. I did one for a woman one time. It's a lot of information, but they need it in order to determine whether or not they can investigate the um, crime or not. That is all I have. I know that Allegra and I finished in a little less than 40 minutes. Um, does anybody have any questions? And I do want to thank you all for the opportunity and Allegra as well to allow me to come and present today. Thank you. Uh, we do have some questions. Yeah. Um, if folks, if you could use the Q&A box um, to write them in, we're not going to do any um, uh I'm not going to be able to unmute you on the, right now, but if you could type, that would be terrific. Um, a question that, that came in is, how do I tell my 90-year-old dad that he shouldn't be giving cash to pe people that approach him in person, in the parking lots, and in the stores? He lives alone and is 350 miles uh, from me. Well, <clears throat> I would tell him that, um, that's a tough one, but I would tell him that you don't want to, there's no reason to give cash out to anybody you don't know. Um, and to better protect yourself, um, you may want to go ahead and and maybe get him a, a, a credit card with, you know, maybe a thousand dollar balance. 
Um, but you know, it's hard to tell our adult parents not to do something. Um, so that's what I would recommend. Um, I don't know if there's a neighbor that can watch over him. I know we had a woman who for six years who lived alone, her husband had died. It was a woodchuck, a, a home improvement scam. Woodchucks are what the police call the, um, men and women who, uh, come from Culpeper, Warrington and Fredericksburg who steal from our elderly victims. Uh, she gave $410,000 over the course of six years. Um, and it was all in cash and she never got, well, I think they got her a little bit of money back. Um, but yeah, and he, you know, I know people like cash because it's important to them, but again, that's a hard one. And I would just say, try to explain to your dad that he shouldn't be giving out money unless he's buying groceries or, or medications. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, what are some suggestions to help someone with dementia? Um, so more, uh, because they're more susceptible to scams. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Um, you know, there, there is no magic answer. Um, and what, what I have, what I've been told by, um, caregivers that I've done presentations with, with Allegra in the past and other organizations, um, they've given them small credit cards to try to help curb any big financial losses. Um, some people have hired, um, you know, round the clock nursing care, but I will, I will caution you that the nursing care people cannot protect or it's a fine line how, whether or not they can protect your loved one from being scammed. Um, we have a criminal case right now that we're helping the police on where the woman, the, the, the caregiver knew that it was probably a scam. She tried to explain it to her client, but she ended up giving close to $200,000 to these gentlemen who were coming in her house to fix stuff and they didn't fix anything. Um, so, you know, again, just trying to, um, what people are doing, installing ring cameras, especially if you're not living and you're not in, you know, in town or in the state. Um, luckily for me personally, um, I'm close enough to my dad. I can get to him in about 40 minutes. Um, my sister can get there a little bit sooner. Um, but we've had to install a ring camera at my dad's house, um, because people were coming and trying to get money from him. Uh, he also, um, someone tried to kick his door down one time that we didn't find out about till after the fact. Mm -hmm. Um, so just, and of course, again, as adult children, I think we're running a fine line between trying to protect our parent and parenting our parent, if that makes sense. And I know you all are working very hard to try to take care of your parents and loved ones, um, but just trying to um, making sure that, you know, maybe letting the bank know ahead of time uh, to kind of watch out for accounts, um, you know, making sure that you're you know, your loved ones aren't losing money. Um, but it's a question of, you know, how much control should you take over if your loved one is, you know, in the early stages of dementia or is more advanced in their possible dementia diagnosis. So that's what I would say just off the top of my head. Allegra, do you have anything to add since you're an expert in this arena? Well, um, <laughs> I don't want to say an expert expert. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think you gave great advice. I think to just uh, limiting what's available on a card. Like you said, you know, there's some of the banks have like cards that you would give to your teenagers, for example, um, that you can really just put a certain limit on and, and there it doesn't go into like deeper accounts. I mean, that might be a, a good start too. What would you say, Melissa, something like very, or, or the credit card, like you said, having a, a small credit card of like $200. I don't know. Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. You no, know, some people uh, we've heard as yeah. low as a hundred. We've heard, uh, you know, as high as a thousand. I mean, that might be a little much, but you know, depending on the comfortability of, you know, and then of course, again, make it a credit card, not a debit card. So again, mm -hmm. adding that extra protection in there, because you do have 60 days to address any um, issues that may arise. Mm 
Yeah, yeah. And considering, is it time, like you mentioned, Melissa, that um, that someone takes over this person's finances um, and takes over all the day-to-day finances, um, which is, a di- it's difficult and it's difficult to manage that, but there are ways to do it. And um, anyone is welcome to reach out to here to us at the AAA and we can help um, at least talk about that conversation and look at options right. too. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, someone else put, unfortunately, there are also scams related to public assistance, mm-hmm. uh, contacting SNAP recipients and telling them there's an issue with their account, asking for the account and PIN. Um, there's also a Medicaid scam saying you have to pay and renew your Medicaid. This is more of a comment, Melissa, but would you agree with with that too? Yeah. And I would say that if there is a problem, they're not going to call you. They're going to write you a letter. Um, letting you know of any possible scam and anybody who let's say they do call they're not going to ask you for any type of personal information pin password none of that information mm-hmm. yep and that's good for folks to keep in mind they will not call you so if someone's and that's also with the credit now but some credit card companies do too so you want to be leery of that um but again if your credit card company's calling you about a questionable charge they're not going to ask you for your PIN number. They're not going to ask you for your account number. They may ask you to verify your last four digits of your social, but they're not going to ask you for all that other information. Mm-hmm. Uh, another question that came in is, uh, my mother-in-law is wary of using auto pay with credit cards. You seem to be suggesting credit card payments are one of the safest ways to pay bills. Is that correct, though? Yeah, so that that is um, right, because the credit card allows you some protection that, you know, obviously a debit card would not, a checking account would not. Now, if your parent does not want to do auto pay, they don't have to set up auto pay. If they want to go every month or call every month to make the payment for whatever bill, kind of maybe a happy medium where they don't have to do the auto pay, but at the same time, they can pay by credit card um, every month. Mm -hmm. Um, another comment um, is that the federal government through the FDIC offers an instructor-led financial literacy product aimed at preventing exploitation of older adults, the money smart for older adults. Mm-hmm. I believe you mentioned that too, didn't you? Um, no, I, I not, did not, not that one. but I mean, I have heard of it and it is a great program. It's a good program. Okay. Yeah. So something for folks that money smart for older adults is another resource. Um Another question, uh, should we try to stop someone repeatedly calling us or just be glad it doesn't elevate into a scam? Well, that's a really good question. So you, so there's a couple of different, different um, ideas that I have. Number one, um, the Federal Trade Commission has the do not call list. You have to register every 10 years and you can register, I believe, up to 10 phone numbers per account. And you can do that online. Um, And if your um, loved one does not have internet, you can certainly help them with that. Or you can call the Federal Trade Commission to see if they can help you over the phone. I think they do want people to go to their website, but I would see if you can get an agent who'd be able to help. So that's number one. Number two, we have had people try to block phone numbers of scammers. The problem is, is that some of these scammers are sophisticated enough where if they call back, it's like a, it's one digit off of the number that you blocked. And so that number is going to come through. Um, so you, I think a cell phone company, I don't know, at one point it used to be, you can only block a hundred numbers and then it would, it would kind of cycle back through. Um, so again, you may want to contact your um, cell phone provider. Um, and I didn't know, I did want to note that apparently they did a survey about landlines where only about 25% of people in the United States have landlines anymore. Some of them are in areas where cell phone coverage is not, cell phone coverage is not very good. Um, but some people do like their cell phone, um, or their landline, which is fine. Um, but there's fewer protections on the landline than there are on the cell phones. Um, and um, yeah, so those would be the two, I would say. And then also the Nomo Robo calls. I know that there is an app that you can do to kind of protect um, receiving as many um, scam calls. So there are other options out there. There's probably some pay ones, uh, options where you have to pay. 
I tend to stay away from those myself because I don't want to pay outside of pocket or out of pocket. Um, but you do what's comfortable for you and just make sure that you research any non-free option before you uh, decide to pay for it. Um, another question that came in is, uh, and you may have answered this somewhat, but let me, <laughs> um, is, um, I've been receiving a stream of phone calls from Jamaica and they're even bold enough to leave voicemails. Uh, it sounds like a scam to me, but maybe you can speak to it. Um, they have not been calling them back and they don't have plans to, but they keep calling multiple times each day. Is there a way to get them to stop? Uh, they block the number each time and they send them to voicemail, but they, you just mentioned this, they, but they use a new number every right. day. Um, so, and they leave a voicemail telling them that they're a winner of a cash prize of $5.5 million. Um, and, and it goes on to give them a code and, and information that they won. Um, how can this person, if they continually, constantly change the name? Um, so that's a tough one, but to me, it sounds like a scam. So what you're doing is absolutely spot on. Um, to get them to stop that, I don't know. We'd have to find out who, where the call is originating. Um, and obviously they're smart enough, like I said, to change just one digit on the number, which is why you keep receiving the phone calls and the voicemails. Um, you could answer one time and, and pretend to be someone from the police and say, this is, you know, Fairfax County police department, do not call back. Um, you know, people have done that. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do um, or say that you will call the federal or the FBI if you call back again and maybe that'll get them to stop. Um, but if you don't want to answer, um, I would just keep blocking the numbers, but I don't know how long it's going to go on. So that's that's a tough one to solve because again, they're using different numbers and they're, you know, bypassing your blocking of the other phone numbers that you've already done. Okay. okay. So uh, another one is um, the many, many scams that are coming from overseas have been and are still a big problem. If someone is not aware of overseas scams, what is one tip you would give to not give out any information? Well, if I don't recognize the phone number myself, I don't answer the phone. Um, I also implore the, if I, if you are not already pre-recorded in my phone, I usually do not answer the phone. And that includes doctor's offices and pharmacies. I try to pre-record or try to, um, add everybody in there. So I know who's calling me. <clears throat> so that's one way. Um, if you do decide to answer the phone again, you know, within five to 10 seconds, you're going to know if it's a scam or not, just hang the phone up. Um, now the Congress has been directing specifically the cell phone companies to reduce the number of scam calls that our cell phones receive on a daily basis. I think there's been some headway made. I think there's a lot more to be done. And I also think that it's never going to be fully eliminated just because we don't know where a lot of these phone calls are coming from. Yes, the, the other example that uh, was brought to us, Allegra, was Jamaica. Um, they could be coming from Nigeria. They could be coming from Australia. They could be coming from Europe, Asia, you know, Antarctica, perhaps. Um, so again, just, you know, you're going to have to do what's best comfort when comfortable for you. If you want to answer the phone and see who it is, that's fine. If you want to send it to voicemail and keep deleting the voicemails, that's fine too. Um, it just based on your comfortability and, you know, um, I, I wish there was a, a magic answer to get these calls to stop, but unfortunately there is not yet. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your thoughts on using do not disturb, like for some phones and then just picking the select people that like pretty much what you just said, you just pick select people that would allow to come through and everything goes to voicemail. And yeah, I think that's a great idea. Voicemail, then you call them back. And if yep. it's not, you don't. <laughs> 
right? No, I think that's a great yeah. idea, Allegra. And I think um, that's kind of what I already do. Mm -hmm. um, but some people like to answer the phone, yeah. um, especially those who are lonely. So during the pandemic, I think older people were, and not, I, I would say, I would say young people, older people, I would say people in general were answering the phone. Um, I can tell you from my work, I, I, as Allegra alluded to in my bio that she read, that I deal with building code complaints. And during the pandemic, we talked to everybody. We didn't have to leave a single voicemail for like four months mm -hmm. because everybody was home. Um, now that we're back into a kind of a, a, a routine um, where we're not at home all the time anymore, um, again, it's, it's, it's your comfortability of how you want to work on your phone. If you want to put do not disturb, and only answer those select phone calls that come through, great. If you want to answer every phone call, that's fine. Just know that, again, you have the ability to hang up if it's not someone you want to talk to. Mm -hmm. I We have a comment and a question from mm -hmm. another uh, audience member. Yeah. Uh, comment, good resources, thank you. My elderly mother can't read or hear very well, um, Manage manages basics. So giving her a video or the website isn't helpful. It's helpful. Okay. Um, so challenging, right? Right. Um, but is there any realistic way to stop numerous credit card or consolidation offers to elderly? Well, um, so there, and I'll have to get this for you, Allegra. So I know that there is a form that I filled out years ago. I think it's through direct mailing. And that's how I stopped a lot of credit card offers from coming to my mail. Um, I think now you have to pay a dollar to do that if you choose to, and I'll, I'll find the form for you, Allegra, and send it, and you can send it out to the group. Um, that would be the only way I know how to do it, unless you want to contact every credit card company and basically put it on, you know, just do not mail, you know, just do not mail anything anymore. But the direct mailing organization that I did probably 23 years ago, I was able to get everything um, I still get a couple every now and again, but it is not nearly what I used to receive. So that might be a way to help your um, elderly um, family member. We had another question about door-to-door -door scammers. Mm -hmm. And um, when somebody comes to the door, what should you tell your loved one? If they don't know this person, they weren't expecting a visitor, um, you know, at this point, should they just not even open the door to address who this person is? Um, so it, again, it's comfortability. If you don't want your um, loved one answering the door, then tell them not to answer the door. I can tell you personally that unless I know somebody is coming, I don't answer the door. I truly do not. We have a ring camera. My husband and I do as part of our security system at our house. Um, and we just use that. And my husband has even gone so far as to talk, to communicate with the individual on our front stoop our front door at our front door to tell them to leave our premises. So the ring camera has helped a lot of people. Um, it can be um, programmed so that it can go on a family member's phone um, or your loved one's phone or multiple phones. Um, but again, just making sure that you have that protection. So um, in that instance, technology can be used for good to help protect your loved ones. Perfect. Well, we are at the end of the hour. I, I really uh, thank you so much. Oh, we have, okay, one last question. <laughs> the last one. To avoid credit card scams, uh, with the agreement of my parents, refroze their credit borough reports. Mm -hmm. So it's impossible for any new credit lines to be opened. Cool. Where yeah, so there is the credit so freeze open. that is allowed um, in Virginia. Um, and if you need to undo it for any reason to get, credit for your parents in this example, then you would just have to call the credit bureau to get it unfrozen so that you can do any business that you need to. And then once that's done, then you would just uh, put the security freeze back on the account. Great. Thank you. And folks, so we are at the end of the hour again. Thank you so much, Melissa, for this excellent information. Um, I want to thank our audience for being here and spending your time with us today. I know your time is valuable. Um, I wanted to invite you to our next caregiver webinar, which is Dementia is Stressful on Wednesday, March 20th from 12 to 1 p.m. Uh, and just a reminder to please fill out the survey and let us know what caregiving topics that you're interested in and uh, for 
for future programs. And I hope everybody uh, has a great afternoon and uh, you take care. We'll be sending you the recording within a week and um, the resources and the presentation. Thank you so much again, Melissa. <laughs> Thank you, Allegra. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.